Hello, my name is James Gibson, and welcome to my tutorial on Flash MX. Uh, in particular, the uh, this is the Dancing Letters tutorial for my Information Technologies class. Anyway, so let's get uh, let's dive right in and uh, get started. So first off, we're going to open up the Flash Animator program, uh, and it should bring you to a screen that looks just like this. So this is where we're going to start setting up our animation. Uh, so just so you can kind of get familiar with what's going on in the local area. Uh, we've got our kind of classic set of tools here. You'll probably remember these from uh, a lot of these from working in Photoshop and, sim and similar uh, similar tools. Uh, we've got our color palettes and everything like that over here. Uh, and we have our timeline up here. Now this is what basically makes Flash Animator really valuable. If you, if you know how a, an actual movie is presented, uh, what it is, it basically comes out as a bunch of still frames that are played at very, very high speed. Uh, and this is what the timeline represents. So you can see 1, 5, 10, 15. Each of these ones is a frame that's going to play through in our animation uh, when we get started here. Uh, right, and also just do some important bits that you might want to know over right here. Right here, where you can see uh, where it says 12 FPS. This is how, how many frames per second they're going to be playing through. Usually you want something around 30, and this one's going to start off at about 12. And you can just double click in here, and we're actually going to change that to uh, 30 frames per second, I think. Uh, everything else on here we can pretty much just stay. Uh, this is going to up these numbers up here will control how big your, uh, your animation screen is. You can feel free to change around those. I'm going to keep mine at 550 by 400 pixels. Uh, just because it's a good size for us to work up. And if you make it very much bigger than this, your your, uh, your animation is going to become very become a very large file. Okay? Uh, oh, you can also change your background color right there if you want to. But anyway, let's just jump into what we're doing here. So, for this tutorial, it's basically just um, a, kind of an introduction to how some of, the, some of these tools work. Uh, and well, so what we're going to do is we're going to animate some letters to cause them to jump around and kind of dance for us. So what I'm going to start off doing is by putting some letters onto the animation field. I do this with a text tool, you can see right here. And I'm just going to click in here, and as you can see, I've got some uh, Times New Roman characters going in, size 68, so a nice big size. You might have to adjust this. You can pick out your color right here, um, and then just type out, uh, you want a small phrase. Uh, you can do your name, um, or something similar like that. Or just say like uh, I'm gonna just say hey with an exclamation mark. You want to keep it sh you want to keep it relatively short because we're gonna be animating each letter. So each time you have each additional letter that you have in your uh, your animation is gonna take that much longer. So uh, I want you guys to start off with at three or four if you could. Okay, so now that we've got that, I'm just gonna center this one. I'm gonna do that with the, using my selection tool, and I'm just gonna wait until I get that little crosshair. You can see it right there. And I'm going to drag it to the middle of my animation. Okay, so uh, so this is going to be our what we're going to work on. Now, unfortunately, right as it is right now, all we can do is animate the whole thing at once, which isn't terribly useful. Uh, so instead, what we actually want to do is break this up into its component parts. So we're going to have uh, we're going to break it up into the H, the E, the Y, and the exclamation point, so that they're all separate. And then we're going to animate each one of them separately. So what we're going to do is I've got this selected, just like this, and I'm going to right click, and I'm going to go down to Break Apart. And this is going to automatically divide our um, divide our uh, text into its into its uh, constituent bits. If I click on this, you'll notice how some extra boxes have appeared. We've got now one for the H, one for the E, one for the Y, and one for the exclamation point. All right. So next up, what we need to do is uh, is now uh, what, we, what we're calling distributing this to layers. Now a layer is kind of like a piece of paper, uh, or multiple pieces of paper I should say, where each layer is one of the pieces of paper inside that inside that stack. Um, you can almost kind of think of them like they're clear, um, so you can see through the whole stack of uh, stack of papers, but uh, but you'll, you'll be interacting with each one on uh, each one separately. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to right click and go distribute to layers. And this is because I've got this whole thing selected. Um, I'm just going to click back out here and just reselect it. So because I've got all of these shapes, all of these um, letters uh, selected at once, it's going to push each one of them to a separate layer in my animation. 
and we'll get we'll get much more into how layers work later on uh, and uh, and how they're used but we'll come back to that in a future tutorial for now just right click and go distribute to layers now you'll notice up here uh, that we've got a bunch of extra things have appeared so we now because we're using text uh, flash MX likes to automatically name these which is great so we should have one named H E Y and exclamation point because I put in hey and you'll also have this layer one at the top. Now you'll notice over here, um, it's kind of hard to see with this kind of the, the line indicator here, but in this top in this top frame right here, so this is frame one for that original layer we had, we've got an empty dot. It's kind of hard to see, but it is there. Um, and uh, while the other layers all have a black dot. And what that means is that layer one doesn't have anything in its, uh, in its, um, uh, in its layer anymore. Um, and we can actually see that if we go down here, I'm just going to turn off, uh, turn off a couple of these other layers so you can't see them. This strange little shape right here is actually an eye if you can't make it out. Um, and th this lets us turn it on, turn on, on and off if we want to be able to see it or not. So as you can see, if I click there, I get a little X and the H disappears. It's still there. It's just hidden from us for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear out, turn off all of my other letters. And therefore, you can see that there's, so this is layer one. So as you can see, we've got a blank screen right now. There's nothing in there. And that's why we've got a white dot right there. Now, since this is a blank one, well, we actually don't need this one anymore. So we're going to right click and go delete layer. There we are. So now it's all gone. And we're going to turn back on these ones. Oh, if you want to turn on and off, seeing all the layers, you can also just click on the eye to turn on, on, off, turn on and off visibility on all layers. Or if you want to get rid of like a specific one, like for example, if I wanted to turn off the E, I can turn that one off. And that's a really useful uh, tool later on when you start working on other stuff, because uh, it'll let you kind of hide things that are getting in the way if you're trying to animate like a background or something like that. You can get rid of the foreground elements so you can see behind them. Anyway, sorry, got a bit of a segue there. So now we're going to continue on our, uh, on our animation. So uh, what we're going to do now is we've got a bunch of letters and uh, these letters aren't going to be uh, uh, terribly useful to us in this form. What we need to do is convert them into something we call a symbol. And a symbol changes how, uh, how we can affect a letter, uh, one of our letters in here. Uh, it lets us, gives us more graphics options, but also uh, limits us in certain ways. So um, right now we, you can go probably go in and uh, change up the color if you wanted to of your letters um, so make sure you get all that kind of stuff status you're kind of happy with what color and, and you know if it's bold or italicized because after we convert this to a symbol you won't be able to change that so how do we convert to a symbol uh, converting to a symbol is, symbol is really really easy you just put your cursor over top of one of the uh, darkened areas of your letters it won't actually work if you're in one of the white spaces so make sure you're over one of the colored areas of it right click and go convert to symbol all right, so this will pop up this little window. So what we want to do is we want to name our symbol the same as what the letter is, just to make it easy to follow. Now, if you happen to pick something that's got multiple copies of the same letter, um, for example, if I had written here, I'd have two E's, uh, just go like E1 and E2, just so you can tell them apart. Uh, make sure you select graphic as your type, sorry, as your behavior. Uh, your registration should be the middle dot right here. And then you can just hit OK. Now it won't look like anything has changed, but what that does, what is that has done is is made this a special element in um, in the animation that we can do different things with. And at this point, I want you to go up to Window and scroll down to get to Library, or you can hit F11. Either one works. I want you to open that up. This little window will right here will pop up, and you can see there is our H right there. Now we need to do this for every letter and. Uh, every letter is going to need to appear in the library before we can go onward. So I'm just going to quickly go ahead here and convert the other rest of mine. Convert symbol. This is the E. So I'm going to go. You can see it appears right over there. Same thing again here. Convert symbol. Y. K. And I'll put the exclamation point. Convert symbol. Exclamation point. There we are. Okay. So, so now we've got um, 
So now we've got these treated as symbols, and that's going to let us do our kind of transformations on them that we're going to want to do when we want to start making them dance. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make one. Sorry, we're going to sorry we're going to set up um, set up our uh, our ending frames. So what we're going to want to do is um, when our movie's going to play through, it's going to our 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 graphics are going to dance kind of throughout all this this period right here. And then we're going to have a little phase that we're going to clean up what's going to be happening, where the letters are going to reassemble back into this original form. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go and make those last frames first. So we're going to go out to, let's see, 30 frames per second. So we're going to go out to 60, actually we're going to go out to 90 frames. So this means this is three seconds of video. So when this plays through, it's going to take three seconds for us to get here. And all along, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag, click down and drag down until I reach, I have all my layers covered. I'm going to go right click and go insert keyframe. And then I'm going to do the same thing again at 120. Now what a keyframe is, is it's a specific point in, the, uh, in, in our animation where you're telling the computer something important is happening here. Um, and so what this is going to do is our letters are going to basically dance around, do a bunch of stuff all the way through in here. And then when this time, when this time comes, they're going to uh, solidify back down and then move back to their original positions, which is what's going to happen here. This way, when we loop our, our animation, it's going to uh, play through, the, the letters are going to explode apart, dance around, come back together, reform the original word, and then if we loop this, it's going to explode again and start doing the whole thing all over again. Okay, so we've got our basic uh, our basic uh, setup here, um, and I'm now going to show you how to start changing and making the letters dance. Now, these frames over here, you're not going to touch. You're going to leave these ones alone, because that's going to be our, that's our cleanup component. You're not going to do anything in there. Everything else is going to be in here right up until we create the motion tweak, which I'll show you in just a minute here. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this up. We've got, what, 90? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, I'm going to go into, actually, frame one of my H. I'm going to show you how to do this with the H, and then you're just going to repeat the same thing with all the other letters. So, um, so I'm going to change frame H now. I'm going to right-click on it and go free transform. So this gives us that little box here. And what it lets me do, and also a bunch of little tools like this, this little guy right here, you can see it's a little curve arrow there. If I hold it off just off to one corner, I can turn my letter. I can stretch it out. I can skew it if I want to. So I can start making it do some, uh, some funny things. And then I'm going to do the same thing at 30. So that's my original frame. This is where it's going to reconstruct back to. Back to. Uh, so I've just created that one. Now at about 30, I'm going to right click and go insert keyframe. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the the, uh, the H again. That, let's turn it over here. Uh, let's scrunch it in a little bit. It's getting a little bit too heavy. Let's go with that. And then at 60, I'm going to do the same thing again. Thin, a little bit more. And over here, and cat. So now, so now I've done all those motions. And if I go through how the how the H looks, uh, you can see it's kind of big and big and angled right there. Now it's flipped around. Then at frame sixty, it's moved over there. And then at frame ninety, it's moving back there. And then that one is back. It's back to normal as well. These are the two that we're not going to touch. Okay, so now what we're going to do um, is now you can go through and make as many changes as you want to in this area right here. Okay, um, so play around with it, have some fun. When you're done, what we're going to do is we're going to click down here. Oops, sorry, I just had to click out of there because I didn't want to move the frame. I want to highlight a frame. 
So now you can see I'm selecting all of this. And now once I've got the entire thing selected, I'm going to um, right click and go create motion tweak. Now what that does is, remember how I was saying that each one of these is an important, uh, important um, uh, position in our animation. Uh, so this is this is this creates a place where the computer knows it has to get your animation to. So what the computer is going to do is it's going to it's going to look at what what what's here on frame one and then again at frame thirty between these two keyframes, and it's going to realize that it needs to kind of convert everything through there so that it get it starts here and finishes its motion here. The computer is going to work out all the animation details in between. So let's just see how this works. Now I can hit enter to play this play this animation. So uh, that was only from part way through, but now if I press enter again, you can see my letter is going to dance around, go back to its start, and there we go. Okay, so that's how you do it for H. Now when you want to do it with E, you're just doing exactly the same thing. Start off with E, let's make it kind of fun. That one over there. And go quickly insert the keyframe here. You're tweaking keyframe. Okay, so E. I can see and then I so I put in my put in my animations, right clicked. Create motion tween. And now I've got two letters animated. And there you go. So basic so all you need to do then is just kind of continue through until you've animated all of your letters. Uh, and that's it. You've completed the uh, dancing letters tutorial and uh, uh, and you're ready to move on to the next project. All right, so that's pretty much all I had to show you for today. If you have any questions, uh, of course, you can always contact me in class or uh, put a comment in the uh, comment section, and uh, I'll try to work that out for you. Oh, uh, at this point, I also want you guys to go file, save as, and make sure you save your uh, uh, save your file uh, into your uh, into your documents, uh, just like normal. Okay. All right. Thanks very much, and I will talk to you later. Have a good day.